The last few years have been an unusually good time to buy a motorcycle. Starting after the 2008 recession, manufacturers increased their efforts to earn new customers and replace the riders who are aging out of ownership. That economic pressure has resulted in affordable, practical, and wonderfully strange new designs. In 2020, that means high-tech safety features such as traction control and even clothing that deploys personal airbags. It means keyless start-slash-stop, transmissions that can predict and prevent you from stalling, and enough options to make choosing an electric motorcycle kind of difficult. Hello, welcome to our new video, just a quick reminder this is 1K sub-series video 10, and you guys have been amazing, we are almost near 1K subs, thanks to all those who subscribed my channel, and those who didn't subscribe yet, please support me by subscribing my channel, thank you so much, let's ride. 7. Kawasaki Ninja 400 Lightweight, affordable, practical, and with cool looks, the Ninja comes with the ideal engine for newbies who want to learn to ride skillfully without earning too many speeding tickets. There are other sporty, road-focused motorcycles like it, but most have single-cylinder engines, which can vibrate at highway speeds. The Ninja's twin-cylinder, however, is smooth on highways but still light enough to be manageable in real-world traffic and parking lots. It's exemplary of a formula that Kawi has been perfecting for decades. Just make sure to spend the $300 extra for ABS. The 2020 model is unchanged from the 2019 version, so a used Ninja 400 can work just as well. 6. Triumph Thruxton RS Within Triumph's lineup of awesomely modern bikes that look old, this is the one to covet. The RS starts from the already excellent Thruxton, which, when it came out in 2016, was praised for being a modern, sporty, comfortable motorcycle disguised as a beautiful classic cafe racer. This version gets upgrades like an Olin's rear suspension, twin 310mm Brembo front brakes, grippy Metzler Racetech tires, and even a lighter weight battery. The parallel twin engine has new cylinder heads, pistons, and camshafts, and the transmission gets a new clutch, too. That adds up to about 7 more horsepower, more low-end torque, and a slightly higher redline. But also, almost 15 pounds in weight reduction, thanks to thinner engine parts and a lighter chassis. Same as most retro bikes with big, powerful engines, the RS is heavier than naked or sport bikes. But the brilliant steering and smooth power compensate to keep it agile. 5. Ducati Panigale V2 No, it's not the fastest bike you can buy. It's not even the fastest bike Ducati makes. But for those of us who do most of our riding on civilian roads with speed limits and cars, the V2's restraint is what makes it the ideal performance-focused motorcycle. A 441-pound rig, it has 155 horsepower, more than enough to thrill any rider on a highway on-ramp or track day but still be manageable at crowded intersections. The V2 also includes electronic aids that can help you approach the bike's limits without paying the price. Among them, a 6-axis inertial measurement unit, IMU, that detects lean angle to help inform the braking and traction control systems. High-tech, ludicrously fast, visually arresting, the V2 is everything that Ducati does better than anyone else. 4. KTM 790 Adventure R Unlike huge 1,000cc plus engines on bigger adventure bikes, the 790's parallel twin is narrow and easy to control. And typical of KTM, there's no unnecessary body work or accessories, which keeps weight down. That makes the 790 agile and manageable on rough roads and especially on punishing surfaces like sand and mud. Plus, there's high-end tech like traction control and a color dash. KTM also takes endurance testing for its engines to extremes, 48 testers running on dynamometers for 180 hours non-stop, they say. We'd pay the $1,000 over the standard adventure for the upgraded suspension with greater 3. Harley-Davidson Street Glide Harley-Davidson is building some unusual motorcycles these days, 
but the brand will always be known for big, comfortable cruisers. Nothing else sounds like the Harley-Davidson 45-degree V-twin engines, and no other brand has as much historical appeal. But even ignoring the romantic lure of HD bikes, the Street Glide works. It has modern conveniences like a color touch screen, push to start, cruise control, and anti-lock braking that accounts for lean angle. The front and rear brakes are also linked, which helps the huge bike come to a safe stop even in a panic situation. But the real appeal is the long, low design and torque-focused engine that keeps the street glide planted through curves and long straights. We also like the big 6-gallon tank, which gives it more range than competing models. 2. Zero SR slash S. Zero has been manufacturing electric motorcycles for over a decade. Except for small operations with limited production, it remains one of the few manufacturers to choose from. But we've tested several and have come away impressed with the build and ride quality of each model. Of Zero's current range, the SR slash S is our pick. It's essentially a Zero SR slash F with fairings and a windshield, which make it more comfortable at speeds above city riding. Despite its heavy weight, 505 pounds, the 140 pound feet of torque puts the SR slash S's performance into serious sport bike territory. A list of premium components help make the high price more palatable, adjustable Showa suspension, J.1 brakes, a Spanish manufacturer of racing-grade parts, and Bosch ABS and traction control, all of which are desirable on any motorcycle. Zero lets you pay extra for faster charging and more range. The base model will recharge from a J1772 charger in about 4 hours. The premium SR slash S, $21,995, or $2,000 more, can handle faster recharging, so a fill-up takes roughly two hours. You can go even higher to a system that will charge in roughly an hour, but that will only work if you can find a location that can produce 12 kilowatt hours. We buy the premium model with its 6 kilowatt hour charging, and heated grips, and skip the $2,895 power tank's additional range, a claimed 200 miles of city driving. 1. Honda Monkey Honda has built three retro-inspired variants of the Grom, the Monkey, the Super Cub, and the Trail 125. While we haven't ridden the trail, of those four, the 65 miles per hour top speed Monkey is our pick. Setting aside the classic design, which is even more endearing in person and tough to not love, its ergonomics, braking, and power delivery are all excellent. The digital speedometer, fuel gauge, rather than a simpler low fuel warning light, and LED front and rear lights make it feel much more premium than we would expect from this price. The Super Cub, $3,749, and Trail 125, $3,899, are especially approachable for newer riders because of their semi-automatic transmissions, you still shift with your left foot, but the clutch works itself. The Super Cub also has a keyless ignition. But we actually prefer the monkey's less sophisticated but more engaging riding experience. We'd spend $200 extra for the front-only ABS, which still lets you lock up and slide the rear tire.